Bellow knows. <laughs> In just a moment, the shadow starts his thrilling adventure. But first, a word about this invisible enemy of the underworld. The shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. As the shadow, he is the mortal enemy of all those who would work evil upon their fellow men. Cranston is gifted with the hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. This hypnotic power is the result of years of research in the mystical orient. The shadow does not bear a charmed life, yet he defies death in all its forms to aid mankind. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the shadow belongs. Today's story, Ghost Town. Well, there it is, Miss Lane. Mr. Cranston, right there below it. That's the famous old coal mine in town of Bat Creek. Well, it certainly looks authentic, God. See, Lamont is just like the movies. Yes, Margot. That howling coyote probably wrecks the Wonder Dog. Uh, we better be traveling down the hill if you want to visit the town before dark. Here, get your boy. Come on. Come on. A guide, I understand that there's quite a story to be told about Bad Creek. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Toward the end of the last century, Bad Creek was the rip roaringest mining town west of the Mississippi. Man and boy, there ain't never been another place like it. Easy, boy. Say, is the path this narrow all the way down the cliff? Yeah, uh, pretty near. It's quite a sheer drop. But if you just keep your horse close up to the side, ma'am, there ain't no danger of falling much. That's encouraging. Yeah. I reckon the thing Bad Creek's best known for is the time Elvaris, the Mexican bandit, shot his aunt Paul's sweetheart, Carmen Cedar. They read a song about that. Oh, yes, I know the song. It's almost as famous as Frankie and Johnny in American folklore. Yeah. Well, we better be getting down faster. It'll be dark soon. Oh, boy! Oh, look out! Hold on! Oh, oh. Uh, Easy. Uh, oh. Sorry, partner. I didn't mean to bump you. My horse just swerved there. Lamont, you almost went over the side of the cliff. Oh, don't be alarmed, ma'am. Man and boy, I ain't never seen no one go off here yet. Well, man and boy, there's always a first time. Yeah. Come on, boy. Come on. Is there anyone living in Bad Creek now? No, sir. Bad Creek's a ghost town. Ain't been a soul lived there for over 45 years. Except, of course, old Pop Evans. Who's Pop Evans? He's an old crackpot who run a hotel when Bad Creek was really operating. Then when the gold gave out and the miners deserted the town, Pop just hung on. Man and boy's been there ever since. Waiting for the town to be revived? Yeah, something like that. He's a bit pet now. Thinks this hotel is still thriving like it used to. <laughs> well, here we are in the town. Oh, boy. Oh. So this is ghost town. Gosh, look at those buildings, Lamont. They're almost falling to pieces. Yes. The deserted streets. So quiet. Uh, we'll just take a quick run down the main street, folks, and get up to the hills again. Oh, no. Let's really stay and explore the place. Well, of course. Give us a chance to look around. Oh, no, no. You can't stay here. No, sir. Oh, well, why not? Partner, when I told you Bad Creek was a ghost town, I didn't just mean it was a deserted village. It's really a town of ghosts. What? Well, what do you mean? I mean that the ghosts of them who lived in Bad Creek when it was a gold mine and camp have been seen here at night reliving their days of glory. There's been shooting and even dead bodies that weren't so pretty to look at that have been found in these lonely streets. Well, that's all right, guys. You can't scare us. I can think of nothing more enjoyable than spending an evening with the bandit Alvarez and his sweetheart Carmen Cedar. Yeah, there's been others who said the same things you're saying, ma'am. They spent a night here, too. The next day they was found raving mad or dead. Why, if you'd seen them folks like I'd seen them, their eyes popping, their faces all twisted like with fear, and them that we found alive wasn't like humans at all. You wouldn't believe it unless you'd seen it. Well, how do you feel about staying now, Margo? Lamont, are you afraid to face the goats? Well, I was thinking of you. Well, if you're thinking of me, you'll agree to stay. Then it's settled. We stay. And you're staying alone, partner. I'll go up to the hills. Well, where is this Pop Evans Hotel? That's down the street a ways, ma'am. You'll see a sign. But look here, ma'am. Won't you change your mind? Man and boy, I've... Man and boy, I've never met a ghost, and I'm not passing up the opportunity. <laughs> well, there's your answer, guide. All right. 
I'll be back here in the morning. I must say that I'm expecting to find that both of you will have met up with the same fate as them others who dared to face the ghosts of Bad Creek. Be the place, Margot. Oh, fella. Can you read that sign? What there is left of it. Evans Imperial Waldorf Grand Hotel. I wonder why I left out the wrist. <laughs> we'll tie the horses to this hitching post. All right. Yeah. All right. Down you come. Uh, thanks. Come on. Hasn't it gotten dark quickly? Not uh, changing your mind about staying here, Margot. No, oh, of course not. Well, then. Shall we enter the Imperial Waldorf Grand Hotel? Definitely. My lorgnette, if you please. We are fresh out of lorgnettes, but I can give you my extra flashlight. It might be more useful. I wish one of the ghosts would fight in that coyote. Might as well get used to it. Uh, watch these steps. Oh. Boards are all caved in. I can just imagine now what the rooms are like. Yeah. Well, here's the door. You first, madame. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, Margo. I neglected to notice that there were no hinges. Oh, I don't see how any self-respecting ghost could live in a place like this. Well, you know how ghosts are. Come on, let's go inside. Well, I guess this is the... I mean, I guess this is the lobby. Yeah. From the looks of things, we're the first guests to arrive since the gold miners left. Look at the pictures on the wall. They're so covered with dust, you can't even see them. Mm-hmm. Come on. Hmm? What are those shadows? Those shadows moving on the wall. <laughs> those are bats, my dear. Hmm. Nice, playful bats. We're attracted by our flashlight. I wish that coyote would howl again. He sounded so friendly compared to this. Mm -hmm. Not uh, frightened, are you, Margot? Frightened? No. Of course not. Why, I... Lamont! Someone over there standing in the corner. Where? Right there by the desk. Margot, do you know what that is? No. That is one of the last survivors of a vanishing race. A cigar store Indian. <laughs> a cigar store Indian? Yes, yeah, tomahawk and all. Well, I... Well, you can't blame me for being... Well, <laughs> you know, I've never met a cigar store Indian before. Well, I'll see if I can arrange a formal introduction. Well, uh, Big Chief Snaggletooth. Come on. Huh. If that's another cigar store Indian coming down those stairs, it's the first one I've ever seen that walked. Well, it's an old man. But that must be Pop Evans. And it's such an old man. Long white hair and wrinkled wig. Good evening, partners. Good evening. Good, good evening. Welcome to the hotel. Thank you. You wish rooms, I presume? Yes, yes, we do. Now step over the desk, please. Thank you. Watch out for that hole there in the floor. I've been telling the porter to fix it up, but he's just forgetful, I guess. Just forgetful. Well, watch your step, Mom. Don't worry. Uh, here we are. Well, dust on the register. I'll have to speak to that clerk. He's getting careless, too. That's the way it is in the hotel business, you know. you got to watch him all the time. Blow this dust off. <coughs> oh, excuse me. More dust than I thought. I'll spin the register around and let you sign in. He needs oil. Sign right below that last name, please. Look, Lamont. That last registration was in 1895. Forty-five years ago. Yes, well, you see, ma'am, business has been kind of slacking off lately. Yes, I would say you've been experiencing a lull. There seems to be a slight difficulty here, Mr. Evans. Uh, no ink in the well. In fact, there's no point in the pen either. No? That's funny. I told that bellboy to always keep them pens in shape. Careless. Careless. They're all careless. Here, use my pen, Lamont. Thank you. We'd uh, like our rooms to be on the same floor, please. Same floor? Yes, let me see. Yes, yes, I think I can accommodate you. you just come this way, please. All right. Oh, uh, Mr. Evans, I, I understand that there are ghosts to be seen here in Van Creek. Oh, yes, yes. Elvarez, Carmen Sita, all the old-timers. They're very good friends of mine. Uh, up these stairs, please. Do you seriously believe that their spirits are still around, Mr. Evans? Believe? 
Why, ma'am, I've been seeing them for years. But I wouldn't be too curious about them if I was you. They ain't fond of strangers. No, sir, not one bit. Now, this here room can be for you, ma'am. In your room, sir. It's just down the hall. Oh. Well, is it all right to go in? I mean, has the room got a floor? Huh? Oh. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. Go right in. We can open our packs and have our supper in your room, Marco, if you don't mind. Mind? If you think I'm going to stay in... What's that? Well, it's a piano. And a woman singing. Yes. Sounds like they started their evening's business at the Crystal Saloon. Well, who are you talking about? Uh, the spirits. That's Carmen Cedar singing now. Carmen Cedar? Hey, if it disturbs you, I'll send word to the sheriff to have him tone it down. He's serious, Lamont. He honestly believes that those are spirits that we're hearing. Ghosts of people who've been dead 40 or more years. Oh, she's got a sweet voice, ain't she? No wonder Elvis is so loco about it. Mr. Evans, where is the Crystal Saloon? Just down the street. Come on, Margot. Where are you going? To the Crystal Saloon. This is our chance to learn something of Mr. Evans' ghost. Oh, singing and playing have stopped. Come on, Margot. We may still be in time to see them. I guess they're gone. Yes. Peculiar behavior for ghosts. Well, there's the piano over there. Let's have a look at it. Well, Mom, this, this place is just as it must have been long ago. Why, there's still glasses on the bar, and the chairs are still set around the tables. If it weren't for the heavy dust, you'd almost believe that, that they were open for business tonight. Well, that's odd. What? The same heavy dust that you speak of is covering the keys of the piano. And yet we heard it play. Was well, there another piano? No. Not here in this room. What was that? Let's find out. Stop! Stop! He's riding up toward the hills. Did you see him as he went past? Not distinctly, no. He was dressed in the costume of old Mexico. The ghost of Alvarez. Or someone pretending to be the ghost of Alvarez. Come on. We'd better see what happened at the hotel. All right. Look, Lamont, on the hotel steps, there's a man lying there. Yes, let's hurry. Uh -huh. Lamont, uh -huh. he's writhing in pain. Mm. So shocked with pain. Yes, uh -huh. this man was the victim. I'd rather you didn't look at him, Margot. Uh -huh. He's been shot through the head. Oh, but he's still alive. Uh -huh. Yes, we'd better go in and find Pop Evans mm -hmm. to get some water and some bandages. Come on, Margot. Uh -huh. oh, he certainly isn't one of the ghosts. No, ghosts never bleed. Mr. Evans! Mr. Evans! Yes? Oh. oh. Oh, you're right here. Mr. Evans, there's been a man seriously wounded right outside your door. We must have some water and bandages quickly. <laughs> Do you hear me, ma'am? Uh, yes, yes, I hear you. But don't get excited. Them's just my friends, the spirits, having a little fun. Listen, Mr. Evans, if you'll just step outside and look, you'll see that this is not a spirit this time. <laughs> sure, sure, I'll come out and look. I've seen the same show a hundred times. But I'll look again. Sure, anything to please the customer. Now, where is this mortally wounded individual? All right, sir. But he's gone. The mark. <laughs> well, uh, are you satisfied? No. No, I'm not a bit satisfied. I suppose you'll be wanting to check out after this little scare. Quite the contrary, Miss Evans. We're more determined than ever to spend the night here. And before morning, I personally guarantee you that we will have exploded for all time the legend of Bad Creek. What do you make of this whole thing, Lamont? Well, Margot, one thing is certain. We're not dealing with ghosts. But who these Halloween artists are and what the purpose of their exhibition is, I still can't figure out. Oh. Hmm. Our friend again. You suppose he's part of this thing, too? No. Just a voluntary helper. They have a woman working with them. The one we heard singing in the Crystal Saloon. Yes. I presume she's supposed to be the spirit of the lovely Carmen Sita. And the man on horseback was dressed as Alvarez. Yes. So... 
Say, common speaker. Elbridge. Margot, why didn't we think of this before? What? The events so far this evening have coincided with the verses of the song Elvarez and Carmen Sita. Remember it? Yes. Yes, in the first verse of the song, Carmen Sita is singing to the gold miners in the crystal saloon. That's right. And in the second verse, Elvarez rides through the town and shoots his rival on the steps of the hotel. <laughs> now we have something to work on. All we have to do is wait for them to begin to enact the next verse. Well, let me see, Lamont. What is that next verse? Mm. Elvarez and Carmen Sita. Now, wait a minute. That's it, that's it. Later on that very evening, down the main street, he did ride. That's you it. remember? Well, that's it. And in the third verse, Elvarez rides back to the crystal saloon and shoots the girl. Yes, yes. And in the fourth verse, the, uh, fourth verse, the, uh, oh, it's oh, funny, I can't oh. remember a bit of it now. Well, is that where the sheriff's posse hangs him? No, 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 no. That's much later in the song. Uh. Yes, yeah, and I don't remember it either. Oh. Well, at least we know what's going to happen next. You mean happen now? Shall we go to the crystal saloon? No, no, it's too late for that. They can stop before we get there. I'd rather investigate this thing. You wait right here in this room, Margot. Here? Oh, Lamar. I'm sure that nothing will happen to you, so please stay. I must do this alone. Well, where are you going? To Pop Evans' room. He's going to receive a visit from the shadow. Time for callers. There. There we are now. Say, where are you? Didn't someone speak to me? Yes, I spoke to you, Mr. Evans. But I don't see you. I'm standing right beside you, Mr. Evans. But you can't see me because I've clouded your brain with my hypnotic power. You, you mean you're invisible? Invisible. A ghost, eh? A real ghost has come at last, eh? <laughs> I, I told him. I told him that. I told him that someday a real ghost would come along and spoil their little game. Well, I'm mighty glad you come, Mr. Uh, uh. Men call me the Shadow. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Shadow. I'm mighty glad you come. They're going to be sorry now, ain't they? You real ghost is going to give him a tussle, huh? Who are they, Mr. Evans? They? Why, they's the ones that's been scaring folks with their pretending to be Elvarez and Carmen Cedar. Murderers, that's what they've been. Plain murderers. But who are these people? What are their names? Their names? Yes, yes. Why, well, you should know that. One of them is... Mr. Evans. Oh. Mr. Evans. It shocked me. Who? Who was it? Must have been. Must have been. He's dead. Is that you, Lamont? Lamont. Why didn't you answer me? The... Oh. You little fool. It is useless to struggle, senorita. You are coming with me. We are leaving here. Just fool, Mr. Lamont. Stop biting me, you little spitfire. Now I shall take you for a little horseback ride, senorita, and make the most of it. It shall be the last ride you will ever take. Ten santo. Now, up we go. There you are. Lamont! Shut up, you. Come on, santo. Hey! Lamont! Hey! Lamont! Well, right now, senorita, we are in one of the tunnels at the single ace gold mine. And I don't think that you should hope anyone will find you here. This mine has been abandoned for almost 50 years. To this door, please. Step in the room. Hello, Alvarez. So you brought back company. <laughs> yes. I brought up one of the guests from the Evans Hotel. Oh, 
Mr. Dane has been nosing around all night. He's the one. It's the guy she had with her. We'll return for him later. Where's Eddie? I'm right here. That man. That's the one who was shot in front of the hotel. <laughs> That's right, sister. But that wound in your head. That was a little trick we learned from some movie folks who was here once. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> Not too good. And I suppose this woman was the one who sang as Carmen Cedar. Yeah. How'd you know? I'd recognize that off-key voice any place. Say, another crack about like that. Now, so I'm finally meeting the ghost of Bad Creek. I guess you could call us that, senorita. Well, why don't you take off your mask, Alvarez, so I can see you, too? I never take off the mask. Now, why did you bring me here? What do you want of me? We have decided, senorita, that you should become one of us. Just what part would I play in this ghost business? Well, we have always felt that our performance would be more effective if we only had a corpse, a real corpse. You mean that? You mean that I, I would be... Yes, senorita, you would be the corpse. No, no. And I think that you will give your first performance this very evening. We will exhibit you for your companion back in Bad Creek. Now, have you any preferences? Preferences? What do you mean? Well, would you rather have a bullet hole perhaps in your head? A real bullet hole this time, of course. Or would you prefer a knife? No, let me out of here. You can't do this to me. Since you won't make your own choice, senorita, I shall make one for you. A knife would be much more effective. No, no. Eddie, you will use your knife, please. You do those things so artistically. Okay. Oh, no, let me go. Let me go. Ah, oh, now it'll be all over in a second, no. sister. Steady now. <laughs> drop that knife, Eddie. Huh? What? Let go of that girl and drop the knife. Oh, Who was that? I don't know. Since you won't drop the knife, I'll have to knock it out of your hand. Well, the knife was knocked out of my hand. I didn't see no one do it. What is this? What's going on? That voice is right here in this room. The voice is still here in the room. You needn't look around for me. I've used my hypnotic power so that you cannot see me. Who are you? I am called the Shadow. The Shadow? I've heard of him. Now, Mr. Alvarez, we shall remove your mask. No, no, take your hands off me. Yeah. Now we see what you look like. How do you like it? Why? Why, you're the guide who led Mr. Krantz and me to Bad Creek. Well, what of it? Why have you tried to frighten people away from Bad Creek? What secret have you here? You've been willing to resort to murder to protect. We like to be alone, that's all. It wouldn't be gold, would it? Answer me. Is it gold? Why don't you find out? On my way in here, I saw that there'd been some recent diggings in this mine. When I examined it, I saw that you'd struck a vein of pure gold. That's why you've tried to frighten people away. You're stealing this gold from a mine that does not belong to you. Yeah? What can you do about it? I can turn you over to the authorities. All of you. On charges of larceny... And murder. Listen, Shadow, you've gone far enough, see? You ain't telling us what to do. Nobody is. We've been prepared for just such a happening as this. Well prepared. There's enough dynamite planted in this mine to blow the whole work higher than the skyrocket. No, no, don't use the dynamite. <laughs> Shut up, Eddie. Maybe we can't see you, Shadow, but when I pull the switch, you'll die just like the rest of us. Hey, he, he don't know what he's saying, Shadow. I don't, huh? Well, let's pull the switch and see. No, stop him. Don't touch that switch. Let me go. You hear me, Shadow? Let go. Look out. You're knocking over the lamp. <laughs> well, you can't see me now either, Shadow. The fight is on even terms. Come on. Where are you? Margo, come with me quickly. Can you hear me? We're going to try to get out of here. Well, where are you, Shadow? Are you afraid of me? <laughs> are you? Cut it out, will you? If you pull that switch, you'll kill all of us. Shut up. Why don't you try to stop me from pulling the switch now, Shadow, huh? Wait a minute. Where's that girl? You must have made a break. And I'm going to do the same. Uh, me too. Oh, no, you don't. No one is getting out of here alive. Lamont. I'm right here, Margot. Well, I made it just in time. Are you all right? Yes, but those people, those people we left in the mine. They're buried in there. There's nothing we can do. Oh, how awful. Lamont, how did you know where to look for them? Well, very simple, Margot. 
You remember how we followed the movements of the ghost by recalling the verses of the Alvarez and Carmen Cita song? Yes. Well, I finally remember the fourth verse. It tells of how Alvarez fled to the single ace mine on the hillside. I played the hunch that they were sticking to the song and came here. Lamont, from now on, man and boy, that's my favorite melody. to hear next week's unusually thrilling shadow story, when Lamont and Margot venture into voodoo land to solve the weird mystery of the tropics. I wonder if you can help us. Uh, we're looking for the Nesbitt plantation. Nesbitt? Yes. Nesbitt plantation? Yes, yes. Keep away. Keep away from there. Keep away. Come back here. Come back. Lamont, did you see his face? Do you suppose he was a, a zombie? Today's program is based on a story. Today's program is based on a story copyrighted by the Shadow Magazine. The plot or fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs>